Hello everyone, it's Carl here from Games Brains Are Banging Alive. Very pleased, very, very pleased to be chatting with Nicholas Carlson of the Technical Melodic Metal Band. Variation on that, I think, Orbit Culture. Nicholas, how on earth are you doing? I'm doing really great. Uh, the album has been out now for, uh, what is it now? Three or four days or something. Yeah. I don't know, five maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're doing good at our end here. Absolutely. I'm not surprised you're kind of losing track of uh, the sort of days that where it's actually been released because um, obviously the last couple of months, Elephant in a Room has been incredibly different and for not just for Orbit Culture, but music industry as a whole. How have you personally been kind of holding up uh, over the last couple of months? Yeah, you know, uh, the thing is here in Sweden, um, we, we, um, we, we went with a different path, uh, path with the coronavirus. So to be honest, I haven't really, you know, been that affected by it. Mm. Uh, sure, we've seen some people wear some masks, but other than that, you know, everything just strolls on like it used to. I find that amazing because you're not the first uh, band or artist I've spoken to from Sweden in the last couple of weeks. And it's been fascinating because in the UK, you don't really hear much about the Scandinavian side of things, Sweden and so on. And everyone's saying the same thing that you're saying, which is, you know, life just kind of carried on and you've been coping quite well about that. But that different approach yeah. it had an impact on all but culture inevitably anyway. Um, how have you handled that side of things? Uh, yeah, it was a real bummer there when we, uh, you know, as many other bands, we had to cancel or postpone all of the shows. Uh, but I, th I think for us, it was a good thing because we really had time to, to really finish the album the way we wanted. Um, mm. And, uh, you know, I have started to write new music during, during the, you know, the free time that we were given. So, but yeah, we, it, it took its toll, but it's, it's, for us, it was for the better good, actually. Okay. You say you're writing new music. Is that for Orbit Culture? Is that just more of a personal thing? No, it's uh, definitely for Orbit Culture. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, the, probably the biggest thing that kind of came from this period is the album Delay. It was originally slated for release in like May, right? Yeah, that was, that was you know, uh, what we aimed at. Yeah. Um, but then we had some uh, meetings and stuff with the, the label and we thought people were uh, so worried during that time in May or uh, and even earlier. So we decided to let the coronavirus calm down a bit and, uh, you know, release uh, the open eye video instead uh, okay. in, in July there, just to, to keep the ball rolling and uh, to keep the fans happy, I guess. Yeah, because a delay is a delay, but it, ultimately if you just kind of stopped, stopped, not released it in May and then just gone quiet to August, the industry moves very quickly. Yeah, forgotten absolutely. About. That, that's very true. So you feel like you kind of, did you feel like you kind of took advantage of the downtime, as it were, or did you kind of look like almost in envy of what other bands and artists were doing during lockdowns and stuff like that? Uh, no, we definitely took advantage of the whole situation. Uh, everything, you know, when it comes to writing, um, you know, making videos and, and stuff like that, it really gave us the time to really focus on what we want to do. Is that something you kind of were comfortable with before? that kind of heavy online presence? Uh, no, uh, you know, everyone in the band are like computer nerds. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the social media marketing is something that we have lacked quite a bit, I think. Uh, and, it, you know, it's so important these days to, you know, keep it up. But uh, we, are, we are so, you know, involved with the music instead. So I think that's one of the reasons that we actually got a label from the start, just so they, you know, could uh, kick our asses. You know, you have to, guys have to do this and mm. that just to push it, actually. And have so, they? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> For sure. So it's something you reckon you get more comfortable with, something that you'll have learned from. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's a learning process each day. Um, but, uh, you know, hopefully you get better at, at the stuff you do, so. Yeah, because it's a very complex world nowadays to do that stuff. It's not like you just go, all right, we've made a video and that goes on YouTube. You've got to do your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter, sometimes even more, your Tumblr's, your um, 
yeah. the box. <laughs> yeah, it's the whole package. Uh, but uh, I think as long as the music is good, uh, I, I really believe in that. If, if the music is good, it will reach people nonetheless, mm. hopefully. I mean, just a cursory glance, you just randomly look for your Facebook page, you can see your fan base is very um, conversational, very quick to jump on and talk and co um, uh, add comments to your news and stuff like that. So you certainly have the audience for conversations, as it were. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, that's, you know, that's what's amazing about it, uh, that people actually comment and, you know, give a shit. <laughs> so, so it's really cool. You, you still seem a little bit uh, in the cloud almost on the fact that the idea that people would give a shit about orbit culture. Absolutely. <laughs> Till the yeah. day I die. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know if, if uh, in, you know, in 2020, why, why do you need to be cocky about stuff like that? You know, that's, that, that's uh, you know, our main motto. You always have to be, you know, down to earth. And you know, act actually talk to the fans because they are the ones that buy your music in the end. <laughs> Do you find it hard to sell yourself to like an international audience? Because Sweden, obviously, music scene is quite famous, dating back to like the '90s and stuff like that. And you're part of what is I, I, I would see as like a new school of uh, metal that's coming from Sweden. Um, but obviously, you know, that's in Sweden, and you have a great audience there. But internationally, getting out there is that easy? Uh, you know, being I'm, I'm, I'm very you know, unexperienced in that area uh, to begin with. So, you know, I, I'm one of those guys who, before the label, I just put it, everything up on YouTube, and hopefully, someone saw it. Mm. Uh, I, I don't know anything about marketing, whatever. Uh, uh, but but I hope it reaches you know every every country <laughs> yeah but but it's it's really if you look at the numbers it's really been in the states and and germany that's that's where people listen people here in sweden they they do listen to but they're kind of more laid back on you know on the well, whole europe, sort of thing yeah yeah europe in general has always had such a strong taste for every variation on melodic metal as it were however you want to define that so it's no surprise when you say okay germany and the likes have been eating up orbit culture um that's always it's always it's sort of always a positive suite you know that's great yeah, <laughs> yeah that's really cool um so yeah yeah well we mentioned it several times, obviously, Nija, was, it was finally released August 7th, 2020, by Seek and Strike. Um, a couple of firsts for you with the record. Obviously, your first with Seek and Strike. And first with your current lineup, but that implies like it's a new lineup, so to speak, which it, it isn't that new in the sense um, of like, like, it's like this year, that kind of thing. Um, but did these changes have like a massive effect when, when with the band this time around, when it came to writing this album and so on? Um... You know, <laughs> being the control freak I am. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, I, I've I've written for this band since I found it in 2013. Uh, so it's it's more or less become my little baby uh, mm -hmm. in some way. Um, but I think when uh, when the new guys joined, uh, Frederick, Richard, and Christopher, there we th they were so encouraging and they brought this new energy to keep keep me motivated and keep, you know, this snowball running because everyone is so driven and passionate about, about orbit culture. So that really helps when, you know, making a, a record like this, for sure. That's good. That's good. It's interesting you call yourself a control freak. Um, yeah. <laughs> you're certainly not the first uh, band founder, original member and so on to perhaps suggest that is the case, but you obviously keep yourself quite grounded. We've established that. Um, how do you, how do you balance then your control freak tendencies with the sharing of duties, as it were, with your other band members? You know, sometimes you just, you know, you're not thinking about it. You just, it's just a part of you, who you are. So, you, you know, you answer emails, send out CDs, all that stuff, write music, you know, uh, but, but we have found quite a good balance, uh, actually. Um, you know, Frederick, the bassist, uh, takes um, 
he handles you know the traveling part and you know calling and uh, arranging stuff like that and uh christopher and uh yeah he's part of that too and richard is he's you know always online finding new new merch designs and so forth uh, okay so, that's good so, that's good yeah yeah so we are a small company in that sort of way <laughs> it's it's no longer just put an album out, get on stage. It is it's a company, a business. Yeah, and um, it's fun, but uh, you always have to remember that it's it's the music that you sell. Well, yeah, of course, absolutely. And are the are the other guys happy enough, uh, comfortable enough to tell you if you're going a bit over the top? Are they happy enough to step in? <laughs> yeah, yeah. When it comes to the writing, absolutely. Fantastic. That's sometimes what you need, I think, as well. When it's your baby. Yeah, you have to have, you know, all the eyes and ears that you can get uh, in the, in the, especially in the final stages. Um, Are you, would you call yourself a bit of a, perf a perfectionist as well? Uh, I think so. <laughs> Even though I hope it's not a bad thing though, but uh, I, yeah, I guess I would call me, uh, call myself a perfectionist. I agree with what you're saying. It's not, it's kind of like, it shouldn't be seen as a bad thing, but it's often used in a bad connotation. Yeah, that's true. Because where's the cutting off point? Uh, a perfectionist, where, where do you find yourself going, okay, I've tweaked and I've played around with this track or the album to the point where if I do any more, it'll be too much. How do you stop yourself? Um, exhaustion, I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I remember when I mixed uh this the single rebirth for this album um i sat sat down for like three weeks every night and uh but by the end of the third week i was like uh, fuck this i'm out okay. and then i just exported it and that was the final <laughs> 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 so yeah it's very draining but um hopefully you know when i look back at it now it's it, it was totally worth it i guess if, as long as you can look back at it and think it was worth it. It's a good barometer, I guess, when you're sick and tired of your, your work, what you're doing, then walk away. Yeah. Yeah. So from your perspective then, obviously you've lived with the album a lot longer than say the likes of me or any other fan has. So do you still have the same sense of satisfaction with the end product now that perhaps you did when you first put it through its stages in the studio? Right now, I um, I kind of hate it <laughs> because you can hear all the faults and stuff still. But uh, uh, you know, when, when you uh, when you're writing those riffs for the first time and hearing it, you just look oh, like oh yeah, I got a little goosebumps here. <laughs> and the, and of course, when you hear the same song for like five hundred times, it's it's hard to get those goosebumps. I guess I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I can't imagine what that position would be like. I'm not a musician in a way, shape or form uh, for creativity on that. And the idea that you'd have to hear that same riff or that same note over and over again, I think I'd go crazy. So it's always incredible that you still yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can hear it. But, um, but, but it, it, it takes a completely different form. And, you know, I can see it out on like Spotify or something or hold it in my hands. Mm. Then, and then, and when I hear the song, then I, it, it just takes a new life and it feels fresh again in, in some sort of way. But um, yeah. Yeah, you've sent your child out into the world. They've reached the age of being an adult and now all you can do is stand back and see and hope everything works out okay. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, the reaction so far, with five days since release, the reaction's been pretty phenomenal, I've noticed, across, you talked about in Europe as well, but in the UK as well, um, your name has come up several times in certain other forms, and I'll get to that at the end, because I do want to talk about a specific point. Um, but is the reaction something you're paying strong attention to, or is it just something that comes your way and you think, oh, cool? Uh, yeah, you know, we read every comment that we get, because we are so we are so fascinated by it. <laughs> yeah. We are so grateful for it too. So yeah, I definitely we, you know, I can sit on YouTube and like, you know, just pull the screen down just to update it. Yeah. If there is something new there. <laughs> That's fantastic. It's particularly YouTube comments. Cause that can be a hotbed of, Ooh, danger. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, we've been through that too. Um, but it's always good fun. You know? Absolutely. And anonymity makes people very, very brave. That's true. <laughs> So I think it's fair to say you guys have been pretty prolific since your inception in 2013. There's no real slowing down. It's a constantly moving vehicle in your case. Where does the drive, in particular yourself, where does the drive to keep pushing on at such speed come from? Um, you know, this is like, uh, you know, I found my passion in life, I guess. Uh, yeah. This is what I want to do. And this is what I've been doing for the last seven years. Uh, and even though if you look back, it's, you know, seven years as a band is pretty much, uh, but yeah, um, it doesn't feel like it, you know, it, when it's, it's always so much fun. So it doesn't feel uh, hard at all, actually, uh, just to, um, you know, it's, yeah, of course, when you sit down and mix for three weeks uh, with, you know, barely no sleep, that that can be hard, but it's so worth it. You know, the, uh, you know, the response from the people mm. and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I think the main goal is just to, we really want to go out and tour and, you okay. know, live that life. So that's the goal. You are obviously quite a modern band as well. You're growing up and making music in the modern era. I, we've talked so much about streaming the YouTube already, and you know the score. You, you're you not going to be selling a million out. You're not going platinum and stuff like that. That doesn't oh. exist anymore, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so it's interesting that you've still got that uh, drive in a world where basically making money is very, very difficult. Yeah, for sure. It also feels like seven years is so... It's so such a it's such a baby number. Like you should have only had one album, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's. Uh, but I think uh, since we switched members and stuff like that, it there there are absolutely been points there. You know, but like, not nothing will ever happen to this shit. Uh, but there's some there's some other guy in, talking in my head that you know you have to really work on this for mm. for people to. To, to give a shit. Yeah. And ultimately, it's always about building a reputation. Um, there, yeah. are, there are countless bands that are 25, 30 years into a career that can still considered underground, yet yeah. they sell out venues because their reputation precedes them. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, since, since we, uh, we were out last year with Rivers on I Hill on uh, their- I know, uh, I saw you. Field. Yeah. Oh, you did. You were <laughs> cool. in London. <laughs> Yeah. At the dome. That that's correct. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, we, me, me, my wife, my brother, my son were all there. Cool. That's awesome to hear. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, being being that was our first tour ever and you know, it was just love at first sight. Everything, you know, from the people, you know, to the venues, you know, it, it just it was like living in a bubble and uh, mm. that's it, it almost, I think, uh, I can speak for everyone of us in the band, including the merch guy. It was like, this is, you know, it's kind of a drug for us. We have to do this. <laughs> yeah, because it was an incredibly detailed tour as well and a lineup. We were sharing the stage with um, a, an array of bands uh, across the world that really kind of highlighted the strength in heavy metal, really. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, and those guys in in all of the bands were so so nice to us. You know, yeah, I can I can honestly say that every one of those bands, uh, you know, Black Crown, Merle, and Rivers, they just took uh, us under their wings and you, you, you know just showed us the ropes. Yeah, yeah. So it, it was, was a very special tour. It was an amazing, amazing. I mean, I'll bang on about a specific date, but you that that tour was so by the four bands that are on it for us. The literally amazing lineup. Um, kind of thing you want to see again in the future. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah you do... Sorry, go on. Uh, uh, sorry, you go on. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just going to say, so uh, my question was actually going to be related to positivity, but how you've answered and talked about the previous one, to me kind of feels like you've already so, uh, you've answered it. You're so positive about the future, about Orbit culture. And it seems like that's what's coming across from the release of the new album and the fans um, too, really, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, just, just, just move forward and uh, appreciate the small things. Uh, 
and even and all, of course the bigger things that's happening with the band uh, of always. course yeah, I mean, moving forward is the obvious plan you want to do. A bit difficult at the moment. Um, yeah. Move completely forward. It's very slow moving. Um, are you worried or got any or concerned about like the industry in regards to the virus? Uh, we're still so far from something resembling normalcy. Uh, yeah, we we've spoken about it. You know, uh, you know, humanity doesn't know it. I guess some, you know, a guy in a suit knows more than us but <laughs> but uh i think uh yeah it's so hard to say you know let's say this just span on for like the next three or four years mm -hmm. who, who knows really but uh at the same time we we, act, we have like the strongest force on earth and, it, and that's internet yeah so, so we will just have to you know really tangle that stuff and learn it is it is a constant wait and see. Yeah, that's true. Well, you do have a few things lined up next year already. Empiricon Festival in April, Summer Blast in August. Um, they're the two I could find. What else is in the works that you can talk about? Uh, we are wor working on getting out on a tour yeah. uh, in the beginning of next year. Uh, but I can't, can't, unfortunately, say much about it <laughs> yet. <Of course. laughs> but uh, yeah, we're hoping to score some festival gigs uh, other than Summer Blast um, and just and just see, as you said, whether this, um, you know, how much the coronavirus will let us. Well, yeah, you talk about other festivals. We would love to have you back in the UK at a certain festival, one of our favorites and one of the best in the UK, Bloodstock, uh, August oh, 2021. Yeah. Your Ooh. name, right? This is what I was talking about earlier, Ryan. Your name has popped up a hell of a lot in comments on the Facebook threads about bands being booked or asked for or new releases and so on. Interested? Are you interested in Bloodstock? <laughs> Absolutely, man. Because <laughs> they have an extra day next year, so there's a hell of a lot more bands to be filled. Oh my God, just call us. <laughs> we will be on the next plane for sure. <laughs> when this goes up online, I'll make sure I tag the uh, organizers on Twitter in it. Yeah, you have to do that. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Nicholas, that's, that's been brilliant. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Carl. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on GBHBL.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal, what else is life for?